Alright, so I thought I'd do a video going over Abyss, since I think it's in a good place right now. It used to be one of my least favourite mechanics, simply because it wasn't rewarding enough, and some of the mobs could be rippy. Anyway, Abyss is by no means a reliable money maker, but what it is good for is farming powerful 5 to 6 mod Abyss Jewels, and these are going to be really good for improving your DPS and survivability in your builds. And also they're good for farming interesting items with Abyss sockets now, whilst before they were fairly rare to get them as drops, but with the new Scarabs we can get a lot of them. And if you're lucky now, you can actually find items that have a Fractured Abyssal Socket mod. Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate just how powerful this Abyssal Socket modifier can be when paired with a 5 or 6 mod jewel. So if we look at this claw, right, we've got a decent claw here. It's not the best claw, but it's got 640 EDPS. It's got high crit multiplier. It's a fairly fast attacking weapon. Now obviously we've sacrificed a suffix here for an Abyssal Socket. And obviously the socket itself, so it's only a 2 link item instead of a 3 link item. But in exchange for that, we can put a jewel like this in. This is only a 5 mod, but as you can see it adds 4 different attack modifiers and energy shield onto this claw. Now this claw has given us a lot of damage and ES. Obviously this isn't anything new of course, items with abyssal sockets and 5 to 6 mod abyss jewels have been in the game for a while now. But they've never been this obtainable before. Okay, so for our scarabs then, we're using two abyss scarabs to put two additional abysses into our map. We're using an abyss scarab of emptiness to give the rare monsters, or rare abyss monsters I should say, a 50% chance to drop a rare item uh, with an abyssal socket. And lastly, we're going to be using an abyss scarab of edifice, and this is going to make it so that the abysses spawn hordes as they travel, and these hordes can give us uh, more abyss jewels that have five to six mods on them. Okay, so I'll quickly talk about the atlas nodes you need. So first up, you're going to pick up Underground Kingdom, and this is to spawn more abysses into your maps. Then you'll need to get Corrupted Gears. This is to make the Stygian Spires drop Corrupted 5 to 6 modules. You're going to need to take Abyssal Army to spawn more Abyssal Monsters, which obviously will increase the amount of items of Abyss Sockets that drop. And lastly, you need Trail of Destruction to increase the amount of pits we get. And the more pits we get, obviously, the more hordes we're going to get. And more hordes means more 5 to 6 mod Abyss jewels. It also increases the amount of monsters we get, again meaning additional items with abyss sockets. Some of you might not know what the horde is, so I'll just put some footage up here now. Basically they're like chests that spawn along the um, cracks of the abyss. And as it moves along it spawns more of them, and you just open them as you go. And it gives you a mixture of like scarabs and raw currency, stuff like that. But obviously what we're looking for is the 5 to 6 mod abyss jewels. Alright, so something I want to talk about then is the cost to run this strategy, and it is extremely cheap. These scarabs sell in bulk for less than a Chaos Orb. For example, the Abyss Scarab itself is 2 for 1 Chaos. The Scarab of Emptiness is about 3 to 4 for 1 Chaos. And the Scarab of Edifice is again 2 for 1 Chaos. So, let's just say it's 2 Chaos for argument's sake. And then the Abyss Craft on our map device to give us 2 additional Abysses, which is 6 Chaos, that's a total of 8 Chaos to run this strategy. It is extremely cheap and well worth it in my opinion. Okay, so to save you a bunch of time, I ran a map off camera. And as you can see, we got a whole bunch of scarabs here. A whole lot of bubblegum currency. We found some tier 16 maps, obviously. And we got lucky enough to find a divine orb. And we also got a fortunate card. Obviously, the main thing here are these corrupted jewels. We got seven corrupted abyss jewels. And for the abyssal socket items, we got a whole bunch in here as well. Uh, there was more, but I didn't pick them all up because they take up a lot of space, but you get the idea. Okay, so something you might find whilst you're farming Abyss is an Abyssal Depths, and that will take you down to one of the Lich Bosses. Now, the Lich Bosses can drop you a pretty good unique item if you're lucky. Uh, for instance, you can get an Amanamu's Gaze, which is about 20 Divine Orbs. There's other uniques which have a bit of a variable to them. For example, the Darkness Enthroned uh, Belt, that's worth about 4 Chaos. But if you roll a 100% increase effect, then it's worth about 10 divines. Similarly, you have the Shroud of the Lightless, which if it rolls 2 Abyssal Sockets, it's about 10 Chaos. If you roll 3, it's 20 divines. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say on Abyss. Like always, I'll have the Atlas I use in this video in my description and in a pinned comment. Also, feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you. Anyway, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in about 2 weeks. I just haven't really been having much fun in Path of Exile lately. So this might be the last PoE video that I make for this league. Anyways, lately I've been playing Armour of Forger instead, and been having a lot of fun with that.
damn good shot. <laughs> Nice shot. Uh, damn. damn, dude. <laughs> so I might do some videos on that game. I've also been filming stuff IRL, like metal detecting. Weed. So if you'd like to see some IRL content as well, just let me know. And uh, oh yeah, I filed my mage blood as well because I was so bored and unsurprisingly nothing happened. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye.